Indiana is widely known for basketball. However, the state has also given rise to world boxing champions such as Kid McCoy, Jack Dillon, Charles Bud Taylor, and Tony Zale. During the 1940s, Indianapolis became a fight town, showcasing contenders like Willard Reed, Johnny Denson, and Tracy Cox. Yet after this golden age, the state experienced a prolonged drought in producing fighters of championship caliber. This changed in the 1970s, when one fighter reignited the city's passion for boxing. He became an Olympian, and as a professional, he captured the world title three times, breathing new life into the once thriving fight town. Marvin Johnson was born on April 12, 1954, in Indianapolis, Indiana, the fifth of nine children. His father, a construction worker, had moved from Hernando, Mississippi to Indianapolis to raise his family. Johnson endured bullying as a youth, but was encouraged to take up boxing. At 14, Johnson wandered into the St. Rita Police Athletic League gym, where he met Champ Cheney, a former fighter and neighborhood legend. Cheney, who was once the third-ranked heavyweight contender in the Joe Lewis era, was now a police officer and spent time working with youth in the gym. Johnson quickly became his prized pupil. He won the sub-novice title at the Golden Gloves before skipping the novice class and jumping straight into the open division at the National Golden Gloves. Johnson emerged victorious in the tournament, receiving a standing ovation from the 15,000 people in attendance. Despite his success in boxing, Johnson also had aspirations in football. However, the coach at Crispus Attucks High School encouraged him to stick to boxing, fearing potential injuries that could hinder his boxing career. Instead, Johnson joined a traveling Indianapolis boxing team that included standouts like Sammy Naismith and Norman Goines. Still, Johnson was not content with just being a national champion. I want to be somebody, really somebody, Johnson said. Not just some guy who sits around and talks a lot when he's older. At the time, Johnson was the youngest fighter to win a national title, drawing comparisons to Muhammad Ali, who also achieved the feat at a similar age. In an interview with the Indianapolis Star in April of 1971, Johnson said, I wonder in 10 years when I look at this story, you're going to write if I think this was the best time of my life, or just the beginning. Funny, you know, you really wonder. Johnson had dreams of Olympic glory, then turning pro and winning the heavyweight championship. After graduating from high school, he worked as a messenger at the Indiana National Bank while simultaneously preparing for the Olympic tryouts. Johnson's path to the Olympics was marked by four consecutive victories in the trial, securing his spot on the U.S. team. In the Olympics, Johnson won his first two fights. However, in the semifinals, he followed incorrect advice from his corner and couldn't seem to defend against the right cross of his Russian opponent. The fight was stopped, and Johnson had to settle for a bronze medal. The bronze medal wasn't what he wanted, but it was better than nothing. Upon his return home, the city of Indianapolis honored Johnson by declaring a day in his name and presenting him with the keys to the city. Johnson made his professional debut eight months after the Olympics. A consortium of businessmen, a judge and a doctor, formed a corporation that signed Johnson to a three-year contract and presented him with a cash bonus, a bonus that Johnson used to purchase a Fleetwood Cadillac with a red interior and a burglar alarm. But Johnson's progress in the sport was slow. He fought only six times in his first two years due to professional red tape and numerous fight cancellations. His skills began to rust, leading to a disappointing reaction from his hometown fans before redeeming himself with an impressive victory over longtime contender Ray Anderson. Following this slow start, the corporation released him from his contract, citing their inability to advance his career. Johnson then signed with Arnold Weiss, a Philadelphia-based manager, and began fighting at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. With a fighting style that one reporter described as a thrashing octopus, Johnson quickly rose through the rankings, entering the top five before facing another contender in Matthew San Muhammad, then known as Matthew Franklin. The winner was promised a title shot. Matt Franklin, obviously the better boxer of the two, but the hitter, no question about that, is Marvin Johnson.
Johnson uh, has that plotting style, but he he likes to have a fighter come at him where he likes to counter as much as possible. He seems that as much as uh, trouble that Franklin has had with that straight ahead plotting style, then I think Johnson will really go to the attack and, and not wait like he usually does and have the encounter. Thing about Marvin Johnson as he has only 15 professional fights, but he has had 65 wins as an amateur, 55 of those KOs. Oh, good uppercut there by Marvin Johnson, but Franklin keeps coming in. Scoring there against Marvin Johnson. Johnson backs away. combination of that of, of Franklin. Oh, a good solid right there, too, Bobby. Johnson keeps snapping back, or rather, uh, Franklin keeps snapping back Johnson's head every time he tries to throw a combination. Oh, good exchange. Marvin Johnson and not Franklin. Good uppercut. He's coming through for the bottom. Coming upstairs, coming from underneath is Marvin Johnson, and I think he's uh, bloody Matt Franklin's nose a little bit. We're seeing lots of action here in round number two. They're going into the closing seconds of the second round. Boy, both fighters going toe to toe. 20 seconds to go in round number two. combination there, but Franklin wasn't faced. Oh, that bounce. 12 of them by KO. Oh, he took a left hook to the, to the chin there, but then he scored with a good left leg combination to the body. Oh, oh, Jensen working away on that Franklin is in heavy trouble. Oh, and Franklin laughs at Marvin Johnson after he took five or six of his best pops. Oh, he's coming. He's coming from underneath uh, Marvin Johnson. And and Joe Belfiore telling Franklin to back off a bit. Oh, he is really come from under here. It's really popping here. Johnson going to the head of Matt Franklin and Franklin after taking a couple good shots, countering himself. He is taking, uh, Franklin is taking some excellent uppercuts at, from Johnson and that has uh, bloodied his nose. Ozzy Sadler, the third man in the ring, has had to do absolutely nothing so far. It was another good left uppercut. His left has been able to score better than the right lead he has. And Franklin counters. Good right by Matt Franklin at the chin of Marvin Johnson. Oh, good left hook by Johnson. Another good left bounce. That one got through. We can see it right here. 35 seconds to go in round three. Franklin scored with a solid right. Another right. Boy, I'll tell you, when they said this is a dream match, the puncher versus the boxer, they weren't whistling when they said it, because this has been a very good bout so far, and we've only ended round three. 
Franklin scoring. And then Jensen comes back. Oh, the left. I tell you, coach, it, <laughs> this is a tough one to score. We're only into the third round. 5-4 Johnson in the first round. 5-4 Franklin the second. 5-4 Johnson this round. Well, they're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and highly unlikely. <laughs> either, either boxer will be around for 12. And every punch that John, uh, Franklin throws, whether it lands or not, these crowd is just going crazy. Yeah, the more exciting bounce we've had on prison. Both fighters standing there throwing a great exchange, and then the other one sits back and throws an exchange, and believe me, the crowd is right on their feet with every exchange, no matter who's throwing them. Good left jab, and now Johnson goes uppercut city to the head of Matt Franklin. Say for yourself the name of this game is going to be conditioning. Johnson has a habit of walking into Franklin. Oh, oh what a left by Johnson there. Oh, oh, really snapped Franklin's head back and bleeding rather profusely from the nose. <laughs> left and right that Franklin hits by oh. Johnson. As Johnson oh, got in. Oh, he, he got two up. up. Johnson trying to hang on. He landed five seconds to go. That's it. And both fighters can't hit it after the bell. And listen to this crowd. Boy, it's exchange for exchange. Three for three, three for three. Franklin exhibiting good straight left-right jabs. Johnson favoring the hook. Here's the Johnson found some second win, Bob, but Franklin has, has been his style through the first four rounds. Taking the best shot. Now Franklin starting the counter punch and he's doing it well. Good left by Johnson to the head of Matt Franklin. Oh, good left jab got through. Right uppercut just glances. Hook, hook right and left uppercut by Marvin Johnson. Franklin's right eye is swelling somewhat underneath. Johnson is throwing with such intensity on a couple of occasions. He's going right off both feet. Franklin starting to cover up with 35 seconds to go in round six. Good left hook. So a lot of leather in the Briscoe bout, but it only came from one side. Here are both guys going at it. <laughs> Although in this round, oh, Matt Franklin taking a lot of punishment. Johnson just snapping Franklin's head back with that left uppercut and that right hook. But they're just uh, straight left right jabs, but. They're not really uh, hurting Johnson, but they're keeping him at bay. 30 seconds to go in round seven. Oh, 
Becoming a tough fight now for Matt Franklin as Marvin Johnson scores with three straight left hook. That's it. That's the end of round seven. Yeah, gave, dealt out most of the punishment, but now Franklin is starting to counter his own and took a good pop there. Oh, two good pops. Good combination by Marvin Johnson to the head of Matt Franklin. Neither fighter really has been that to being close to being knocked down. Although we had Johnson in heavy trouble, if I'm not mistaken, in round six. Just at the end of the round. Franklin scoring a couple there, Bob. Oh! He's doing something there, but... They still the old uh, John L. Sullivan routine. They're just standing there and uh, I'm trying to unload that right hand. He says, come on, Justin, hit me with your best left and I'm like, it's not gauging me. Oh! Scoring late in the round is Matthew Franklin. And... Marvin Johnson for the North American Boxing Federation Light Heavyweight Championship. Round nine. That particular style, good hook that time by Matt Franklin. Oh, oh! Johnson, he it. wasn't too punched out because he saw him three solid left hooks to Matt Franklin. And but Matt Franklin wasn't even staggered. And they were solid punches. Oh, he scored to the head of Marvin Johnson did Matt Franklin there. Quick, quick sneaky right. Johnson walked in another sneaky right. Oh, oh, and Johnson countered. Oh. a good right. Marvin Johnson, Bobby might be running out of legs. Matt Franklin trying to send away Marvin Johnson. Just seconds remaining. That's it. The end of round nine. Johnson again late in the round, running out of gas, and Matt Franklin coming on. I would think Matt Franklin was going to have to really come out alive and, and win these last three rounds in order to gain this North American title because, my estimation, I think Johnson's ahead on points. Well, I don't think he's that far behind, Bobby, and he starts aggressively here in round 10. Whoever wins the bout, well, I'll tell you, we've seen an excellent boxing card. Boom! Oh, Marvin Johnson took one and gave one. Boom! Each fighter, toe to toe. That's boom. You're in round 10. We've seen Franklin take Johnson's best left hands, but we haven't seen Johnson take too many of the good right hands that Franklin's been known for. to the midsection by Matt Franklin to Marvin Johnson, but then Johnson gets out of the cocoon and unloads good, vicious uppercuts to Matt Franklin's chin. Johnson has thrown all night. 
He's relied on that left of his, but that time he was going to right for it. There's some combinations coming through on Franklin's part. Oh, man, what a fight. 11th round coming up. What a fight that we've seen here tonight. This could even be a draw. Franklin scoring with White, but then Marvin Johnson comes back again. Referee Ozzy Sadler separates both fighters. That leather has popped right from the opening round. Johnson with a good exchange there, a good combination. Not a good right. Chin of Marvin Johnson. That's where he's been getting in most of his trouble throughout the boat is when he's been hanging on the ropes. When he gets out in the center ring, that's when he scores. And he'd be able to handle it, uh, Marvin Johnson. Johnson's his most effective self again when he has a fighter on the ropes. Johnson looks tired and is getting hit, but then gets a left right left combination in. But Franklin somehow still has a lot left. This is unreal. Oh. Oh. What a fight. We're only in the 11th. Got another one to go if they make it. Just, Just under a minute, minute ago. Round 11. And still trying to get that left hook or left upper cut in. Oh! Johnson took three, four, five good pops from Matt Franklin. And really! In heavy trouble! Matt Franklin has Marvin Johnson in deep trouble! Ten seconds to go in the round! Referee Ozzy Sandler thought he had heard the bell. Over, over, um. Boy, I'll tell you what a fight we have here. 11th round, but now this is the 12th and final round. This is where it'll all be decided, I would think. For the North American Boxing Federation Light Heavyweight Championship. Matt Franklin starts out aggressively as he ended round 11. Oh. Boy, this has been about the worst beating I'm sure that Marvin Johnson has ever taken. At the same, same oh. for Matt Franklin. Johnson in deep trouble. He's hanging on. Franklin has Marvin Johnson. That trouble is right. Oh! His right eye is closed. I think he might be out on his feet. Yes! He's out! Franklin! I think my Franklin has just knocked him out! The bout was hailed as the most brutal Philadelphia fight in 15 years, a spectacle of two sadistic madmen battling until only one remained standing. 
Johnson wasted no time after the defeat, stepping back into the ring just two months later. He went on to score five consecutive victories, including notable wins against Billy Douglas, Eddie Davis, and the 1968 Olympic bronze medalist Johnny Baldwin. In June of 1978, he traveled to Yugoslavia to face Mustafa Wasaya, but instead fought Ugandan boxer Lottie Mwale. Despite clearly leading the scheduled 10-round fight, the bout was halted after just eight rounds, and Mwale was declared the points winner. However, the sketchy loss did not hurt Johnson in the rankings. He returned three months later, defeating Jerry Celestine before earning a title shot against Mati Parloff. Johnson dominated the fight from the outset, overpowering the defending titleist to become the fifth world champion from Indiana. His victory was celebrated back home, where he married his high school sweetheart. From the very beginning, I was very nervous, and then after it was all over with, I knew he was capable of doing it in the beginning, but I was just a nervous wreck. Now I've been champion of the world, I can make some of the paydays that I've always had dreams about. And so that keeps me working hard in the game. And it will probably keep me fighting a lot longer than what I really want to fight. I'd like to retire and enjoy my family, spend more time with my wife. I'm gone all the time. I've been training away from her. Been married to her since October 21st and only live with her now for about three or four weeks. Four months following his championship victory, Johnson chose to defend his title against Matthew Franklin, who was not his mandatory challenger. Johnson wanted revenge for his only legitimate defeat. And this is the second meeting between Matthew Franklin and Marvin Johnson. They fought in Philadelphia previously, and it's considered one of the most savage fights in Philly boxing history, and there have been a lot of fights in Philly. So here we go, round number one. Marvin Johnson has never been particularly effective with the right hand jab. His philosophy on boxing is very simple. When the bell rings, you start fighting. And he does that, which has sort of made the pace factor questionable, whether or not he has the stamina to maintain the pace he chooses to set. In winning the championship against Marty Parlov, he used the right hand very effectively and scored a lot of points with it and ultimately rendered Parlov helpless. The left hand is used primarily from a power position of an uppercut. And it's considered by those who have fought him and those who have been around him and watched him to be one of the toughest blows that anybody at 175 pounds has ever carried in their arsenal. Matthew Franklin, on the other hand, has a tendency to arm hit not using as much of the body leverage as he might. Perhaps that is one of the reasons that he's able to maintain a better pace through the course of a tough fight. But here in the early going, the champion has come out pressing, has used the right jab and the left hand very well. He goes ripping to the body. Hard right hand by Franklin, his best punch of the fight. Neither man asks nor gives a quarter. They are both stand-up bangers. The right hand by Franklin was picked off by Johnson. Made a big sound that had no effect. of Johnson. Both blows by Franklin. Both landed. Hard left tag by Johnson. Rattles Franklin some. Remember, it's Johnson's hometown. This is the WBC championship at light heavyweight, 175 pounds. Victor Galindez is the WBA champion, having defeated Mike Rossman a few days ago. 
Will the, they, the winner, Galindez, meet the winner of this fight? Well, who can say? Somewhere down the road, maybe. He has shown in instances, particularly in his last fight against Franklin, this run out of gas. Late. Whereas Franklin has shown remarkable abilities to come back. And Franklin just tagged Johnson with a hard right hand, and the champion seemed to wobble from the hard right. Lost some of the sharpness. Lost his ability to move around. There was a little bit of a slip in that stumble by the champion. Right now it is Franklin ripping away. Here in the second round it is Franklin beginning to assume command. Hard right hand to the jaw of Johnson. Franklin pounding away at the body. Brilliantly conditioned. Johnson comes back with a hard left hook to the side of the head. Bloody fighters at 175 pounds boiling away as we're coming up on 10 seconds to the end of round number two. Hard left hand by Johnson. And the second round is over. The first blow of the round is a short, sharp right to the jaw of Johnson by Franklin. Well, it's abundantly clear that they're just simply going to give everything they've got every minute that they're out there and see who falls. I can't concede that these two men could go at this pace for 15 rounds. They went 12 the last time they met, and Franklin got the call as Johnson collapsed into 12 from a combination of punishment as well as fatigue. That left hand by the champion ricocheted off the head of Franklin. Starting with the uppercut. I'd like to alert our local stations along the way. At the end of this round, we will take the station break. Hard left hand by Johnson. That one missed. Less than a minute to go now in round three. There's that uppercut again. It's a punishing blow. Up and letting it go. Both sides, as a hard left uh, again, the left uppercut slips in by the champion Johnson. Approaching the end of round three, as they trade in the center of the ring, we'll be back with more of this WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship fight after this word from our local station. Johnson comes out, winging a right hook to the body of Matthew Franklin. It was that solid uppercut that seemed to rattle Franklin by the champion in the third round. First time we've seen him let it go. Johnson has 
They're looking to hit each other. Hard right, hit a left by Johnson. Quick, quick with power. This has been the most decisive round in the fight so far for the champion. Marvin Johnson defending his title in the round four. There's a right and a left to the head. The blow to the body was blocked by Franklin. There's the left hook to the side of the head. Champion Johnson in the white front. Half minute to go, round five. Championship for the World Boxing Council, the champion Marvin Johnson of Indianapolis, Matthew Franken of Philadelphia, Johnson, your champion. They met back in 1977. Franklin stopped Johnson in the 12th round. That was for the North American Boxing Federation title. Johnson won the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship December 2nd of last year, beating Yugoslav Mate Polov in Masama, Italy. He knocked him out in the 10th round. This fight is one of those where Johnson has a title and he elects to defend against quite likely the toughest challenger available to him. And the question came up, why? Why Franklin? And Johnson's answer is Franklin scores with a hard right hand and now Matthew's starting to move in a little more, become more aggressive. Johnson's answer was because he's the man that beat me and I remember it vividly. And now Franklin starts to open up a little here in the sixth round. Marvin Johnson. Very decisive in the fourth, took the fifth, has the edge in the fight so far, but now Franklin's starting to crank it up. This is Matthew's pattern. He'll let the other fellow wail away for a while, and then all of a sudden he'll open up. Round number seven. Both fighters with Knicks now. Johnson has a bit of an abrasion inside and under, it seems, of the right eye. And the right eye of Matthew Franklin, very puffy. Back in the fourth round, Johnson was able to get to Franklin with a couple of uppercuts and some hard left hands. Since that time, Franklin's covered better. There's the right hand lead. And it pops into the face of the champion, Marvin Johnson. And winning the WBC light heavyweight title from Monte Falloff, and it's very obvious here today against Matthew Franklin. It's a hard left, and it snaps Franklin. Less than a half minute to go. Round seven. That left hand missed. It missed. Hard right hand. Johnson in trouble. Back into the loop. He's in serious trouble. Bell won't save him. Coming down to the end of the round. It was a hard right hand. Absorbing punishment. 
but dishing out more at this moment than he's taking. Very bad nose bleed by Franklin. Uh, Blood all over his face. Hard right, left hand by Johnson. Franklin comes right back. Hounds him back into the rope. Johnson looks a little weary at the moment. Another right and a left by Franklin. Blood all over his face. And Franklin standing there, flat-footed, throwing everything in his body. Hard right hand to the face of the champion. Another right hand to the face of Johnson. Johnson's in trouble on the rope. And down he goes in his corner. Johnson is down from an accumulation of at least a hundred blows as Matthew Franklin, blood all over his face. Marvin Johnson, shaken, wobbling. The fight is over. The fight is over in the eighth round. Blood all over the face of Matthew Franklin. He really is so weak himself, it doesn't appear that he can show much acceleration in the victory. Marvin Johnson, wilting. Johnson was angry after the stoppage, feeling like he could have continued. After five months of rest, Johnson accepted a tune-up fight before challenging Victor Galindez for the WBA light heavyweight title. Argument earlier by Johnson's corners, we looked the southpaw come out, and the referee is from Caracas, Venezuela, Jesus Chalas. The Johnson corner knew that Galindez on the far side was using a new skin, a plastic substance, to protect the scar tissue above both eyes. Of course, that's illegal, and they had it removed. And they checked very closely at the start of round one here to make sure that it hadn't been put back on. Canvas, after being KO'd by Helmer Kenty, who remains undefeated from Detroit, we're happy to report that Scotty Foreman uh, recovered and is fine. No damage. This is the first round if you just joined us and another part of the tale of the two cities here on ABC. There was a good hook to the body blocked as Johnson's torso is back to us. Another one. Good left to the chin of Johnson. Glendis with a right uppercut. Unorthodox door of punches. Galindez on the right with a minute to go in the second round. There's a good inside left upper cup. Another one. Those are the kind that cut off an opponent. So it's a round of uppercuts here at the Superdome. That's slugging. Now mixing it up. 30 seconds remaining in round two. To the body and two to the head by Galindez. Another one to the jaw. Another. 20 seconds and they'll get a rest. A little bit of holding and hitting by Johnson now. So in five seconds you'll hear the bell. Galendis with a reach of 73 inches. The challenger, Johnson, bending him against the rope, 72 inches. In close, short range slugging. Good left hand by Johnson. Shouting instructions as the former middleweight champion of the world, a man that was undefeated for 13 years. He's been advising Galindis, speaking of Carlos Manzon. This a WBA championship coming up in Las Vegas. The WBC welterweight championship battle. Benitez the champion. punchers are glancing blows. Don't be misled. That one was not. That was a beautiful right hand thrown by Galindez. Sugar Ray Leonard waiting for his big moment. Galindez gets 100000 for this bout. Johnson 50000 compared to the big money in the welterweight championship in Las Vegas. Years of age, Marvin Johnson of Indianapolis to Southwell. The champion is against the ropes where he has spent most of the evening. But that's his style of fighting. 
massive torso. Can throw punishing left hooks like that to the body. Best body punches, though, thus far have been landed by Johnson, digging his right hand deep into the midsection of the checking. is complaining that there was a low blow as he went to the ring you probably saw him double up a little bit but they have ample protection oh a beautiful right hand lead right on the button of Johnson but he took it against the great English light heavyweight former champion John Cunningham and of course he won the title from Marvin Johnson. Johnson didn't hold it long. We're in the tenth round, scheduled for fifteen. There have been no knockdowns. If you just joined us, the Lindis. Johnson on the left, six years younger at 25. Ten point punching with even left hand leads. The referee, Jesus Salas. Oh, the staggering left hand lead. And it jarred the champion. And the referee from Venezuela. We nearly lost him as he. Got between them, so no punches would be thrown after the bell. And again, they do the reviving. Many of the South American corners. Got him. They give them a shower between rounds. Let's look at them. We're in the 11th round now. They're unleashing a lot of heavy leather now. This is only... Oh, and there goes the champion. The Lindos is down in the early part of the 11th round. The referee has stopped the bout. The referee says that is it, and Galindez, we feel sorry for him. He is crying, but he caught a shot that would knock anybody down. So now Marvin Hagler has won his second light heavyweight, or rather Marvin Johnson has won his second light heavyweight championship. He has held the WBC, which he lost to Matt Franklin. Now he's won it. Now a two-time champion, Johnson once again returned to his hometown as a hero. Three months later, he made his first title defense against Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, then known as Eddie Gregory. Gregory was his friend from the amateur days when they were both trying out for the Olympic team in 1972. Eddie taught me how to gamble, Johnson said. We exchanged numbers and he said he'd show me around Brooklyn because he didn't want me to get mugged. Johnson was a 12-5 favorite over Gregory. I only held on to my first title for a few months, Johnson said. I'm not about to give it up that fast again. Johnson started strong, but was floored and hurt in the third round. He never recovered, and Gregory battered him until the fight was stopped in the 11th. We told him to stay in close, Johnson's brother Hank said, but he just kept standing there and taking it. I don't understand it. A six-month rest followed. Johnson returned, notching wins over three journeymen before facing the undefeated and top-ranked contender, Michael Spinks. They fought the next day, and that's when Spinks showed his competitive spirit and beat Broom and represented the United States and won the gold. The action underway in round one. Scoring again on a round system. Supplemental five point. Good left by Marvin Johnson. Covering with his gloves is Michael Spinks. Johnson's corner. His manager, Arnold Weiss, Champ Cheney, the trainer. Henry Johnson, a brother, Leon McGill, a brother-in-law, and the cut man is Dewey McGlynn. In Michael's corner, the cut man is Milt Bailey. Remember him? Cut man for smoking Joe Frazier. We're a minute and a half into round one. Johnson, the pursuer. That's when Spinks, when he gets that distance and leverage, 
can do is damage. to the end of it. Got in a good left following an attempt to double on the right, Marvin Johnson did. A minute to go in round two. Spinks in the black. Michael Spinks was hurt. He got off a good left to Johnson's stomach, which is the way to punish Johnson the way Eddie Mustafa Muhammad did. But immediately Johnson responded and he hurt Michael Spinks. Third round action. Stance, working on the inside there and working effectively. So far, his battle plan has worked. Spinks might be well advised to try to go to the body consistently. With his punching power, that's the way to debilitate Marvin Johnson. Notably in this round, and then the lift in combination. Straightens up, speaks his head with a lift. Michael now trying to fight back. Blood in Michael's mouth. We are almost two minutes into the round. A good combination. Sharp leveled by Spinks against Johnson to the head. But Johnson, Spinks against the ropes, working him on the inside as much as he can. Spinks trying to keep Johnson away, deliver his long and powerful blows. Johnson making things work for him. And we are at the end of round three. City round four. Marvin Johnson off to a fast start, clearly in this fight. Some blood and a bleeding in the mouth of Michael Spinks. But Spinks fought this way against Yaki Lopez. Keep that in mind. Lost all the early rounds. Came on strongly in the end and KO'd Yaki Lopez. And Lopez is a tough ram to knock out. So far, this fight's running in the same pattern. Spinks trying to get punching room, not getting it. Johnson out of the southpaw stance, working effectively. On the inside there, you see the way he scores with those rights and lefts, quick chopping blows, right there. Spinks not getting any foot movement. Ring small, 17 feet, 5 inches. Oh, good right to the belly. That hurt by Spinks against Marvin Johnson. That's the way to do it against Johnson. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad proved that. 
kind of blow will slow Johnson up in a hurry. Minute 10 seconds to If he got up, Spink said, then I would have quit. Reporters speculated that the defeat might signal the end of Johnson's career. Johnson then took nearly a year off from the sport. I had to heal from my wounds after fighting a lot of wars, Johnson said. His contract with promoter Russell Peltz had expired in December of 1981, and Johnson decided to make a go of it on his own, with just his trainer and attorney advising him. But he only fought twice in 1982, returning to face a crosstown rival named Alvino Manson. We worked out in the same gym, Manson said. He was at one punching bag, and I was at another. We did that for a year, but we never said anything to each other. Manson referred to Johnson as an old man, and expressed frustration at living in his shadow. The local press built up the fight, portraying Johnson as the former Indianapolis great, and Manson as the potential successor for the title of best fighter in Indiana. The crowd, just ready to burst, capacity crowd. A rapid punch is when the punch goes on the back of the neck like a karate chop. That is a foul blow. Marvin Johnson, 25, 22 knockout. Marvin Johnson pouring it on. Watch those inside uppercuts by Johnson. He throws tremendous uppercuts. In 1983, Johnson was again limited in ring activity. He then fought six times in 1984 and four times in 1985, working his way back into contention. However, he also began preparing for life after boxing. With Champ Cheney's help, Johnson secured a job as a corrections officer at the Marion County Jail. I see my boxing career coming to an end, Johnson said. You gotta start thinking about what to do. But he also desired one last shot at the title. Riding a 14-fight win streak since his defeat to Michael Spinks, Johnson was ranked as the number one contender in all three sanctioning bodies. When champion Michael Spinks moved up to the heavyweight division, Johnson landed a fight for the vacant title against Leslie Stewart in his hometown of Indianapolis, marking an unprecedented third shot at the title. His biggest payday some years back, 175000 and then after he lost the title for the second time, he was fighting for rather not sums but back now in the spotlight the crowd building the crescendo enveloping market square arena and the bell for round one and johnson as he is prone to do comes out very aggressively he likes to get on top of you and that's exactly the way he's come out as he has stewart backing up stewart is a more tentative type fighter as we said relatively an unknown commodity So at the age of 31, it's still Johnson trying to get on top of you, looking for that knockout. He's got an explosive left hand and a terrific uppercut. Stewart, if he can, would like to slow the pace. Johnson is not allowing it. Stewart into 
indicated yesterday he would trade with Johnson if Johnson came out the way Marvin normally does. But Stewart is doing anything but trading with him right now. Johnson with that right hand. He does not have a rapier-like jab. His right jab is more of a range-finding type. Stewart. A cut has opened just outside the right eye of Leslie Stewart in the green trunks. Johnson pursuing and attacking. And Stewart has spent the entire round with a minute and 20 left in this round backing up. Stewart trying to find his way off the ropes. Landing a pretty decent combination right there. A left followed by a right. gets into the fray offensively, but the blood begins to stream down the right side of Leslie Stewart's face here in round one, and about scheduled for 15. Still pursuing. Still aggressive. Three minutes of non-stop fury from Marvin Johnson. But Stewart fighting back, fighting off the rope.
actual command of this fight. Jackson trying to work inside, but Stewart effectively blocks those blows, comes back with a good right hand, and he's doing some nice work on the body as well. He may, he may not be very flashy, but Leslie Stewart exhibiting some very good skill. He is strong and he is quick. Johnson came out very aggressively, as is his trademark early on. But Stewart has shown good, quick hands, good boxing skill, and a very good chin, because Marvin's been able to land some shots, as has Stewart. So much made over the years about that uppercut that left by Johnson. Stewart with a pretty good one himself. Johnson a lot of credit. It began to appear at the end of round three, as I stated, that Stewart was in the process of taking full command of this fight. But Johnson won't let it happen. Good round for Marvin here in round five. Been a beauty so far. Fifth round now. I think. Outside the right eye of Leslie Stewart. Johnson's performance was described by one reporter as relentless, like a bulldog on a mailman. The fighter now known affectionately as Pops successfully defended his title by stopping Jean-Marie Amibi in 13 rounds. There are a lot of fighters out there who are capable of being world champion, Johnson said, but they don't have my desire, my intensity. God Almighty has blessed me to keep going while the other war horses 
have all fallen by the wayside. Johnson now talked of possible bouts against Thomas Hearns or Marvelous Marvin Hagler. He lamented the fact that after all the years he put into the sport, he still wasn't getting big paydays. I'm a three-time world champ, Johnson said. I don't understand why it's not paying better. Other fighters are getting it. If they get it, why can't I get it? In May of 1987, Johnson received his biggest payday to date, $212,000 for a rematch against Leslie Stewart. Johnson was nearly stopped in the first round, but managed to survive several more rounds until his career came to a sad but brave conclusion as Champ Cheney refused to let him out for the ninth round. In the dressing room, Johnson admitted that age was his true conqueror. He returned to work full-time for the Marion County Sheriff's Department. Johnson then remained in the headlines after a one-hour standoff during which he talked an inmate out of committing suicide. By the early 1990s, Johnson turned to bowling to satisfy his competitive spirit. After being inducted into the World Boxing Hall of Fame in 2008, he attributed his success to his wife, Dolores. She's been there all along, Johnson said. She really shares three-fourths, if not more, of my success. Johnson maintains that he left the game of boxing with no regrets. I say to myself, I've done well. I gave it all I had.